Here we go. Libs of TikTok. This one's here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Pr protesters at Columbia University called Jews pigs and claims we are Hamas and long live Hamas. Uh, here you go. This is happening. This is. Look at this. Deport. So here's what I want to say. I really the guy's think... walking down the street with an Israeli flag on his back. The person calls him a Zionist pig. I think it's fair to draw the distinction between a government and a group of people. If the guy was just looking like, like he was wearing like a yarmulke and the person yelled pig at him, I'd say he's calling Jews pig. I want to make sure we, we at least keep the distinction between criticizing people who support Israel and people who are Jewish. That being said, yo, that woman yelled, we are Hamas twice. Bum, ba -dum, and bum, someone bum, else. Bum, bum. <laughs> yeah. We are Hamas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then, yes, Seamus, it's very funny. <laughs> and then someone else yelled, uh, long live Hamas. That's I don't think she's Hamas. Well, I, gotta, I don't think thing. she's actually. I don't actually think they let her I in. I don't think exactly. I don't let think. her in. Like they, I, I they're like, no, no, you stay. They over would there. lock her up. It's crazy. People I like mean, that. And that's the side she's picking. She's like, this. would they? Would they lock her up under this government, uh, under this administration, where you have people on the FBI terrorist watch list coming, walking into our country? No, no, Hamas, Hamas would. would. He said, "Oh, yeah. I got it." Well, I was like, "Hold the, up a second. Yeah. You're right. The Biden administration, Biden would, administration be like, would roll no out a red one, carpet. No one in America is going to get locked up for anything except Donald Trump. Like, no, no <laughs> one is ever going to be arrested ever again for anything they do. That, that's what okay. the Biden unless promises. you defend yourself I, or your Donald Trump. I got to pull this one up next. This is." Uh, Oh, oh, what is this? Olia Scootercaster on Twitter posting this clip from freedomnews.tv. This is uh, Shai uh, Davidai. I'm not sure. I'm probably pronouncing Davidai. Uh, probably, probably pronouncing that wrong. He is a professor at Columbia and they deactivated his card. Is the university keeping the media out? This is the CEO of the university. Are we not letting the media in? What? Yeah, my card has been deactivated? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just pause. This is a Jewish pro-Israel uh, professor who works at Columbia, and they deactivated his card so he cannot get on campus, period. They offer him an escort specifically to his class, and they're like, no, you can't come in. And he's like, I work here. And they're like, hmm. too bad. They, have, they are outright. The faculty are defending these protesters. Many of whom have yelled they are pro they are Hamas. They, that, that's what they are supporting. They have support. They, they have yelled that Hamas is justified. I mean, look, man. Do you guys remember when Hassan Piker said, "Well, babies are settlers. They they are baby settlers." Remember when he said that? He made a statement to Ethan Klein on really leftovers. smart guy. And this and this is what like effectively broke up their show. He said that he believed the Palestine that, that Hamas is justified in what they're doing because they're trying to reclaim stolen. I'm not going to say what he said because if I read if I a verbatim quote, I think it's just, it goes too far. And then Ethan Klein's like, "Yeah, okay, I get that, but if it was settlers settlers they're going after." And then he's like, "Baby, he, he was uh, Ethan Klein says like there were babies there." And and Hassan goes, "Oh, ba babies are settlers. Like some of the settlers are babies." Bizarre. It's complete and dedication to the idea. I mean, that's just basically saying he he accepts that yeah. babies will be murdered. I know, and no. that and, and he calls justify he, the means. Shouldn't he shock us. That should, that should not shock us. The man is very rapidly but, pro choice too. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Now, now think about a statement like that that was made in October. This protest and what these people are saying, and the school, the faculty came out in support of it, and they actually deactivated the the card of the Jewish professor, and they won't allow him on the campus. Hmm. That's wild. I just wish that uh, America's youth got this excited about other things that were more relevant, right? Like, I wish they were <laughs> rallying like this for a border wall. I wish they were rallying Can like this to, um, you know, against the, the billion dollars we just promised to foreign nations. It would be interesting if the, that the was the trillion thing. dollars. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see this. You know, I'm not against young people being active and dedicated to cause. It's just why is this the cause that has, uh, you know, Electric, uh, electrified America's youth, especially mm. at elite institutions. Like, yeah. theoretically, these are going to potentially become some of the most influential people in our country because we still have a pedigree system where we believe the Ivy League, an Ivy League degree is more valuable than something else, which I don't personally believe. But again, 
they're not rallying for anything that I believe in or support. Like, this is not my priority, and yet this is all that's going to dominate the news cycle right now. Well, well here, here's the question. Are these organic emergences? Are they emerg Is it emergent or is it orchestrated? Well, that's that's the question, right? I mean, and, and are young people capable enough of thinking for themselves at this point in time for any of it to not be orchestrated? It's a really complicated question because you can have a movement that develops organically without anyone having ever thought for themselves because, quite frankly, the movement doesn't have a whole lot of thought put into it. And this is something I've said about the left repeatedly. It's essentially just social decay when people are trying to make intellectual rationalizations and excuses for not doing the things that they need to do to fulfill their obligations and upkeep society, it basically ends up being some kind of left-wing philosophy that they end up spewing. Leftism is really just a person trying to justify their own vice in putting the window dressing of a respectable ideological system of thought on it. So I don't know. It's possible on the one end that all of the protests that we see and all of the movements of people getting really energized for some kind of left wing cause are orchestrated. But then again, they don't really have to be any more than a rock slide has to be orchestrated. Things just fall apart over time. And that's yep. all leftism is. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking this because. These people have no idea what they're protesting. They have no idea why they're upset. They can't tell you the details of American foreign policy, but for some reason, they just know so much about Israel and Palestine. You're allowed to criticize Israel. You're allowed to criticize Hamas. You're allowed to criticize Ukraine. You're allowed to criticize U.S. spending in Sudan and all of these things. But these are young people who seem to have latched on to a cause of the year. I mean, it was BLM four years ago, and this time it's Israel. The only bad news for Democrats, I guess, is they're going to lose a lot of voters over this. Earlier in the show, Scott, you were mentioning that unregistered voters are leaning towards the Republican Party. I don't know that this is the biggest issue for most people, but this is certainly a big issue. If you look at people like Michael Rappaport, I don't know if you guys watch Fallout. You see the new show, Fallout? Mm -mm. He's in it. And I was really excited to see him in that show. He's a funny guy. Um, but he was like one of the most anti-Trump guys forever. And then this Israel stuff happened. And now he's doing interviews where he's like, vote for Trump is on the table. I'm going to vote. Even, I mean, Joe Rogan for a while saying it. These are big moves by prominent comedians. You know, Joe was never the craziest anti-Trumper with TDS. Rappaport was making video after video after video. Now, all of a sudden, it's, it's shifting. Well, in regards to whether it's organic or orchestrated, I think it's a little bit of both. But ultimately, look, we're human. It comes down to NIMBY, not in my backyard. Yeah. People don't care about something unless it's personally affecting them. And that's why, I mean, look at the drone attacks that we just had from Iran to Israel. I want to make it clear, if you are watching right now, and you are a male or even a female that's 18 to 25 years old, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for you to be shipped overseas and to go to war. So I hope that you're enjoying that free college tuition because that's the exchange that's going on with this Biden administration. Sure, you'll get your college, but it's going to be an exchange for maybe a limb maybe your life, for a man that's going to check his watch when your casket is shipped back to our country when you died on behalf of a man that doesn't even care about you. If you're a young man, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for war. And I want to make that very clear. I'll stress this too. If you are young and you are wondering why you can't afford rent, why you can't afford food or insurance or a car, it's because all of these tax dollars, money that is supposed to be Generally, generationally inherited by the next generation, you Gen Z, millennials too. It's going to non-citizens, quote unquote, newcomers. Yep. It's going to foreign wars in Ukraine. It's going to Zelensky and it's going to places like Israel. It's going to Sudan. It's going to a lot of different places. In fact, somehow it's ending up in places like Iran and Gaza at the exact same time. What was it like $9 billion was sent to, to Gaza for aid? Hamas then takes that as the governing authority of, of the region. We're just basically funding everything. Why? One big reason is the U.S. seems to think, and not just the U.S., but Western forces, I guess, like NATO and them, uh, Western allies think that if you give people dollars, they'll have confidence and they will spend it. And if everyone's spending it, they won't spend anything else. But to my point, if Gen Z votes for Democrats, and this is what, like, it's fluctuating in the polls, what they're basically saying is they don't want a place to live. They will live mm -hmm. in a shoebox with five other people, and they will give all of our tax dollars to non-citizens in foreign countries. Donald Trump is the guy who said, secure our borders, bring back the jobs. He's far from perfect, but he was good on foreign policy. He was good on jobs in this country. 
A lot of Gen Z voted for Joe Biden because that was the trend. That was the thing you were supposed to do. And now they're wondering why. In New York City, it's $2,300 for a bachelor apartment. That means it has no bathroom. And they're like, I can Mom. barely. Uh, yeah, in some parts. So it's like, I guess don't live there. But some people, some people have to. That's why it exists. That's the market price. So now a lot of these people are living in microscopic apartments they can barely afford. Ugh. They're making videos and putting them, up, putting them on TikTok where they're like, why can't I live? I don't get it. And it's like, my friend. It's because the Democrats are bringing in millions of non-citizens and giving them luxury hotel rooms, giving them what you were supposed to inherit. Now, I'll tell you this. You want to talk about what you deserve and what you own as a human life on this planet? It could be the dirt. You wake up one day in the middle of the woods with absolutely nothing. You're buck naked. And they say, you get what you can find. That's humanity. But guess what? Over the past several thousand years, our ancestors have built things, invented things, learned things, shared that knowledge with their children. And every generation, the children inherit either a bit of knowledge or resources from those who came before them. For the, for, it's not the first time in history, but one of the first times in this country, we have a major political party hell-bent on giving away the inheritance of the, the shoulders of giants to non-citizens in foreign countries. And now Gen Z is left holding an empty bag. Mm hmm well, and it's even worse than that, right? It's not even just the case that this money is being given away in a massive cash grab because the treasury is being looted. Of course, that is also the case. It's very much, I would say, at the heart of this. But you could at least try to help yourself sleep at night by saying this money is going to a good cause. But the reality is almost all of the problems that have been called mil caused militarily or militaristically have been a result of some form of military spending in the past. So, for example, we created the and in, in, in funded the, the terrorist organizations that were fighting the Middle East now, like ISIS. We sided with the, the Mujahideen uh, creating uh, Al Qaeda and and Israel even funded Hamas early on. Like we the, the foreign policy establishment in our country and the ones we're allied with in other countries have made so many horrific blunders historically. And then they come to us and say, well, just give us some more cash. We'll fix it this time. Why? But w were they blunders? Yeah, or exactly. Or That's was the question. this orchestrated? Like you just said, Tim, they're playing both sides of the chess game. It yep. doesn't matter who wins. Mm -hmm. They win. They win. They're doing what mm -hmm. they want to do. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're funding Hamas, well, at the same time, Israel, therefore, you're the attacks against each other. Who wins? The industrial military complex and Boeing, who's going to get that money? Because what people don't realize is it's not like we're giving all this money to Ukraine. It's really going back into our country that it's going into missiles and, and weapons and, and going into the military industrial complex. But furthermore, I, I, I feel convicted to say this is the biggest reason why I'm a Republican and why I'm supporting Donald Trump is the issue of illegal immigration. It's, it's so much more than we're just giving our resources and our land and we're pushing out our people. But I, I want to make it clear, Americans are being replaced by illegal aliens and look no further than Lake and Riley of Georgia. If you want to talk about all the Democrats that say they're pro women and they're pro women's rights and they want to support our women, where were you for Lake and Riley? Why is it that a young American girl in our country has to be scared about going for a run and she was murdered by an illegal alien that this crime was 100% preventable? And home, she should be alive today. Right. Homeland Security Secretary Mayor was asked about her and he was like i don't know who that is like wow. that isn't that crazy you have one job which is to Here's, be aware of the crime because of illegal immigration you couldn't even do that what and then the response you get from the left and from democrats is this was a murder and murder happens all the time why are you <laughs> singling out illegal immigration and the response is actually typical or I, 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 simple sorry the response is hey when it comes to new york and you have people being pushed in front of trains. We are also screaming, arrest these people <laughs> and lock right. them up. That's but right. this is what happened with Lake and yeah. Riley. A big response from leftists and Democrats was, you're singling out illegal immigration when the real issue was someone got murdered. And I'm like, bro, we've been talking about crime for a long time. Mm -hmm. As if that's, that's like disconnected. Yeah, right. also as if those two things are disconnected. Because firstly, if someone is in the country illegally, they already broke our laws to be here and we didn't do anything to remove them. Yeah. Then yes, our legal system actually has failed to fulfill its duty to protect citizens. So it's on another level. In the same way, there are so many people. You, you keep hearing stories uh, almost every day. Keep seeing stories in the news. Some, some young woman gets uh, murdered or somebody gets hit. 
riot, there's some violent activity, and it's somebody who had been arrested and let go for 50 other violent crimes because we can't prosecute people because that's mean. And we don't like doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, the reality is... It's mean. It's mean. Yeah. No, I mean, th the reality is, uh, you're right. It, it, it's more than just giving our resources away and our country away. It's about protecting the citizens who currently live here. We're just not interested in doing that anymore. No. Scott, wanna... were you always a Republican? Yes. I, well, I've always been Republican, but I think there's the difference between a Mitt Romney and oh a gosh. John McCain Republican versus a Donald Trump or Josh Hawley, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was a big wake up call. I mean, look, I voted for Mitt Romney. I truly in 2012, I believed in him at the time. And to come to the realization that some of these people are just as bad, if not worse than the Democrats, because at least the Democrats, they'll smile and lie in your face. The Republicans, they'll they'll tell you, uh, I mean, excuse me, the, the Democrats will tell you exactly what they're doing with, with a Cheshire Cat grin. The Republicans, they'll lie to you, and then they'll stab you in the back, and then they'll do the opposite when you elected them thinking that you were voting for America first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.